Tokia, mi anke kansan, mi wile pana e sona pi Toki Pona. Hey, I'm Greg Dan3. Today we're going to be talking about Toki Pona. Specifically, we're going to be talking about pre predicates. Now, if you're in the Toki Pona community already, you've probably heard of them as pre verbs. We'll understand in a bit why I'm using that terminology. But for starters, let's introduce all of today's new words. There's going to be less of them than normal. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and write up some words we already know. So, our words for today are. Wheelie. W I L E. Wheelie has to do with wants and needs. As a pre predicate, it still has to do with wants or needs. It's drawn with this W shape. Then we have Ken. K E N. It's drawn with the shape of a K and it has to do with ability or permission or possibility and probability. We have comma, which I've drawn a bit large here. That's K A M A. It's drawn with a pair of legs that are moving toward the left. And comma has to do with things that are arriving, incoming, invited. And as a pre predicate, it has to do with things which are ongoing or things which begin. Then we have Awen, A W E N, and Awen has to do with things which are continuing, staying, enduring, or protected. Things that don't change their state or don't change their motion. As a pre predicate, it applies in the same way. And it's drawn with a pair of legs that are feet facing out. Very important. Feet are facing out for Awen. All right. So we have Sona, which we've seen before. S O N A. Sona, of course, has to do with knowledge and understanding, and as a pre predicate, has to do with having skill in something or having knowledge of something. Next, we have Alasa. And that's spelled A-L-A-S-A. -A -A, and it's drawn with a bow and arrow. You have a bow with an arrow going through it. Alasa has to do with searching or hunting. And we'll get to the pre-predicate in a moment. Then we have looking. Again, another word we know. L U K I N. So, looking, as we know, is drawn with an I shape and has to do with sight. And looking and alasa both have the same meaning as pre predicates. They mean to try. Now, the reason they both have this meaning as pre predicates is because Toki Pona, though it has had a short life compared to other languages, has changed over time as its usage has changed since it was first created. All right, and then our last word for this lesson, which will single-handedly double the length of this lesson, is ala. A-L-A. Ala is drawn with this X symbol. And if you remember the word ale from the modifiers lesson, drawn with an infinity symbol, you can think of ala as a counterpart to ale. Ale is everything or the entire collection. Ala is nothing, none, or it negates the previous word or phrase. So let's talk about all these different ideas that pre predicates give us and that ala gives us. I went over the fact that there are exactly seven pre predicates. Unlike most of the other words in Toki Pona, you can't simply put pre predicates wherever. They only belong in one place, and they belong right at the start of the predicate, thus the name. So let's have a look at what that's like with wile. Let's say, mi wile pali. If we were to look at this through the lens of it being a modifier, we would say, okay, the predicate is wile, and pali here goes on to modify it. So this is some kind of want that has to do with work or creation. But that's not the case here. 
scratch out that arrow. Instead, here, wile is a pre-predicate, and the predicate actually begins with pali. So that also makes pali the head of the predicate. You can think of pre-predicates as a special kind of modifier. They apply only to the predicate, their order matters a little bit, and they actually do modify the thing they are applying to, as opposed to modifiers which only make it more specific. So if we look at wile here as a pre-predicate, well, this makes the predicate, pali, something that is wanted. Very important distinction. So let's say this interpretation here is mi wile pali, I want to work or I want to create. I would like to consider an alternative statement of this. So what if we said mi wile e pali? Well, we can see more clearly here that the thing that's wanted is a pali, right? E means we're applying something from the predicate to the object. But here's the thing. If the thing you want is an action, it can make more sense and be better understood if that action is placed in the predicate. If you put it in the object, though not always, it may be assumed to be a physical thing or some separate idea from the predicate. It's a different thing. And if it's a different thing, your listener might misunderstand you. So that's what's important about pre-predicates in general. They let us make statements in a more clear way. In this case, we want to say that an action is the thing we want, so we put that action in the predicate. In other words, this statement here, mi wile e pali, that can mean the same thing as mi wile pali, but it doesn't necessarily. And if you really do mean an action for pali, the former, mi wile pali, is more clear. Let's go on to another one. Mi ken wawa. So the ken pre-predicate, as I mentioned before, has to do with abilities or permissions. And here, it's modifying wawa in order to make this wawa an ability, right? You could say, I can be strong. Let's consider a restatement without a pre-predicate. This one is actually a good bit closer. We could say, ken mi li wawa. In the first we say, mi ken wawa, I am able to be strong. In the second one we say, ken mi li wawa, my ability is strength. These are a little bit different. They do have some subtleties to them, and while you can see the commonalities they have, there's different reasons you'd want to use either one. So be cautious of that. Again, pre-predicates let you save a little bit of time, and they let you put things into the predicate to make it more clear that you mean an action. There's different reasons to use all these different statements. Now let's try sina, comma, sona. So the comma pre-predicate has to do with things that are opening, things that are beginning, things that are starting. And it also has to do with things that are ongoing or more exactly, continuous. You could think of it being similar to words that end in ing in English, like learning or growing, right? You could also refer to actions that are beginning, such as going to sleep. So let's interpret this one first. Sina, comma, sona. Kama modifies sona. This sona is something that is ongoing or something that is arriving, something that is coming. Okay, so this is the arrival of knowledge or learning, right? Let's look at another couple quick examples. Let's say kasi li kama suli. Kasi li kama suli. Here, Kama is making suli a thing that is arriving or becoming, right? What we get is that the suli, arriving or becoming, it's ongoing. Okay, this is growing. It is becoming large. Let's go on to the next pre-predicate. Mi awen kute. The awen pre-predicate has to do with something that is continuing, right? And it is distinct from the kama pre-predicate. In comma's case, it is implying something is changing. We comma suli, 
Okay, that means we are becoming large, right? Or say we kamalape. That means we become asleep, right? But here, mi awenkute, here the interpretation is I continue listening or I am still listening. The act of listening is still happening. There is no change implied. In fact, the opposite is true in the case of awen. Next pre-predicate. Ona, li, sona, pakala, e, ni. Ona, li, sona, pakala, e, ni. Now, I said before that the sona pre-predicate has to do with skill in or knowledge of a given thing. It's very similar to the idea of sona on its own. In this case, we're saying that the thing we have knowledge of is pakala, or rather the thing they have knowledge of is pakala. Let's examine just the subject and the predicate. Ona li sona pakala is something like they know how to break. They know how to make mistakes. They're skilled at it, right? Ona li sona pakala e ni. They know how to break this. Like say you have something big, problematic in your way. They know how to break it. They can do it. All right, and I would like to discuss something a little bit important about Sona in particular, which is how it behaves as compared to a restatement without the Sona preverb. Let's say we have mi Sona Pali versus mi Sona E Pali. So what we get here is in the first case, mi sona pali, is that I am saying, I know how to work or create. That is a thing I am claiming directly. I have that knowledge or I have that skill, right? In the second case, I'm saying mi sona e pali. This could be referring to the skill of pali, as in the knowledge of creating or working, right? But it could also be referring to understanding some specific instance of working or creating and not necessarily having skill in it, right? So these statements, again, have commonalities, but since our poly here is intended to be an action, it is more clear to have it in the predicate as before. Next, we have the two same meaning pre-predicates. So let's say, me, alasa, Pona e sina. Mi alasa pona e sina. And then we could directly swap alasa for lukin. Mi lukin pona e sina. Again, alasa and lukin mean the same thing as pre predicates. There is a variety of reasons why you might choose one over the other. And I find that a fair number of people in the community simply pick one and go with it, and a number of others use them interchangeably without really thinking about it. I personally prefer alasa, but again, they have the same meaning. Feel free to use the one that feels best to you. Now, as for the interpretation of this statement, so I said before that alasa and looking as preverbs mean to try. In other words, they're saying that the predicate here, pona in this case, is being made some attempt, right? Mi alasa pona e sina. That would be, I am trying to help you, or I am trying to improve you, right? And again, as before, pona could be any sort of help or improve. It could be in a medical sense. It could be, I'm teaching you. It could be, I'm simply trying to be your friend, right? But mi alasa pona e sina. Couple of quick notes before we move on to multiple pre-predicates. For starters, it is possible to reuse the same word as both a pre-predicate and as the predicate. You could say, mi, sona, sona. I am skilled at understanding. Mi, sona, sona. There's nothing wrong with reusing the same word as both a pre-predicate and as a predicate. That's perfectly fine. 
Uh, that being said, it's not too common to do so because for the most part, your predicate alone, right there, will get you most of the way to the meaning you want with this doubled idea, this double use of a single word. As a matter of fact, uh, it's fairly common to intentionally avoid reusing the same word in the same statement. One more quick note. So I mentioned in the previous lesson, you can simply ignore the modifiers as you try to understand a statement. But you can't do the same thing with pre-predicates. And the reason why is pre-predicates actually do modify the thing they apply to. They change the meaning of it. And we observed that during these lessons. So be cautious of that. You do have to go look at the pre-predicates to understand what is going on in a statement. Now let's try a couple of examples of multiple pre-predicates. Let's say, me, awen, ken, mama, e, kasi. Me, awen, ken, mama, e, kasi. So we recognize that awen and ken are our two pre-predicates. And we know that awen means something is ongoing or continuing, and we know that ken has to do with ability, right? And then mama as a predicate is something like to parent, to raise, right? So if I say me awen ken mama e kasi, well, we can here pause for a moment to consider what it would mean if we ignored the pre-predicates. Now, we still have to go back for them because they change the meaning of the sentence, but we can look at just me mama e kasi, right? That would be, I raise or I grow the plants. I am a parent to the plants. Let's go back for the pre-predicates. Well, awen, okay, something is ongoing. Maybe the mama is ongoing. Ken, there is an ability here. We're talking about some ability we have. Me, awen, ken, mama, e kasi. That would be, I am still able to parent the plants right? I'm still able to raise the plants. Let's pause for a moment and consider swapping the pre-predicates. So what if we had Ken and then Awen? Me, Ken, Awen, Mama, E, Kasi. Well, in this case, it is a little different, and that's because our pre-predicates apply from left to right. In this case, the Ken is applying to Awen, Mama. I have the ability to continue being a parent, right? And so the distinction here is that here, we're talking about I still have the ability, and here, we're talking about being able to continue, right? They're subtly different ideas. In the first case, you might say somebody who's getting up in age struggling to take care of their garden. And in this case, you might say somebody is stepping up and saying, yeah, I was the gardener before, and I can still be the gardener. They are subtly different ideas. Me awen ken mama ekasi, and me ken awen mama ekasi. Now, for the most part, you won't see this come up too much, and some pre-predicates lend themselves better to certain orders. We don't need to get too into that level of detail, but it is a thing that the order matters. Let me clear that, and we're gonna do ala. So let's have the sentence, mi pona ala. Mi pona ala. Well, ala's function here is to negate the head of a phrase or the previous modifier. In this case, mi pona ala, I am not good. Now, be a little cautious because though it is rare, ala can be a modifier. And so there, it has to do with nothingness or void or none, right? And while that can be pretty similar to negating the previous thing, that's something you usually have to establish with context. But me, pona, ala, where it negates pona, that's simply, I am not good. All right, and there is another thing to note here. Again, toki pona words don't have opposites. There are some uses of pona that are opposite to uses of ike, but pona ala is not the same as ike. 
You could compare the phrases, this is good and this is not bad in English. The negation doesn't make them the same statement. Let's go on to another example. Yan ala li ante e lipu. Here's an even better example of where ala could be used as an actual modifier as opposed to something which negates the previous word. This could be nobody, as in there are no persons who changed the document, right? This could also be yan ala, as in some non-person changed the document. Both of these interpretations are there in this statement. This ambiguity does come up fairly often, so you need to be cautious. Context will tell you what is the truth. Let's try a pre-predicate negated by ala. Kasi li kama ala ike. Kasi li kama ala ike. So interpretation-wise, this would be something like the plant did not become bad. It also could be the plant did not change to being bad, right? This could be saying, implying rather, the plant never became bad or it was bad in the first place, right? But it is saying, kasi li kama ala ike. The plant did not change to being bad. It did not become bad, right? Ala negates the pre-predicate kama. All right, and now we're going to go on to exercises. Telo li kama laso e kiwen. Telo li kama laso e kiwen. So context-wise, let's say every day you come out to the edge of the water and watch the waves lapping over the rocks and then wash back out. As you come out day after day, you can see that all the spots where the water can reach are turning green. They're growing moss. And so you remark, Telo li kama laso e kiwen. The water is changing the rocks to green. Now, this is a very important thing to examine because you can comma things that aren't actions. They can also be descriptions, right? Let's try another. Let's say, Wile sina li awen suli. Wile sina li awen suli. So let's say you're discussing a difficult decision with your family. Do you leave your job that has been stressing you out for months on end? You don't want to leave because you know that it's going to hurt your coworkers and your friends as they try to fill the gap you leave behind. But your brother chimes in with some helpful perspective. Wile sina li awen suli. Your needs, your wants are still important. The idea of suli is being made ongoing in an emotional sense. Let's do another one. Mi sona pali e kulupu suli. Mi sona pali e kulupu suli. So you've been applying for a new job as a social media manager. You've been talking on about your experiences and your skills, but most importantly, you explain that you know the primary skill of a social media manager. Mi sona pali e kulupu suli. I know how to make a big community. And you can see why that would be important, right? Let's try one with multiple pre-predicates. Ona, li, awen, kama, pona. Ona, li, awen, kama, pona. Your friend is sick. They've been laying in bed for a couple of days. They're really not feeling well. They've been doing their best to recover. And all their other friends have been asking you, how are they doing? What's going on? And you explain simply. Ona, li, awen, kama, pona. They are still becoming better. They're still improving. Let's try another one. Mi wile alasa sona e kule ale. Mi wile alasa sona e kule ale. 
And remember, you could swap in Lukin for Alasa here. So let's say you've been watching your little sister stare into a triangular prism. Light is shining from the window into the prism, and the prism scatters light all through the room in a variety of colors. And so your sister says, Mi wille alasa sona e kule ale. I want to try understanding all the colors. You can imagine this being something like, I want to know why the prism works this way, right? Mi wille alasa sona e kule ale. Let's try one with ala. Ona li ken ala ni. Ona li ken ala ni. Let's say your research team has been working to put together a presentation, but one member of your team will not be present on the day of the presentation, the one who was going to give it. So you go to the research coordinator and you explain, Ona li ken ala ni. They can't do this. They do not have the ability to do this. This, of course, being the thing that was referenced in the story, the act of giving a presentation. Now, we're going to skip the English to Tokipona translation exercises for this lesson, but there are tons of exercises on my website, gregdan3.github.io slash toki-pona. Check them out. But let's do one more. Sina, Sona, Ala. Wawa, e, ken, sina. Sina, sona ala wawa, e, ken, sina. Let's say you've discovered you have a fascinating new power. You can grow plants wherever you point, but you can't make more than small blades of grass or patches of moss. As you discuss this newfound power with your teacher, they explain the roadblock that you have. Sina sona ala wawa e ken sina. You don't understand how to empower your new ability. The most important part of this sentence is the sona ala here, the pre predicate indicating you don't have this skill, right? And the skill being wawa, or rather the knowledge being wawa. You don't understand how to empower your ability. All right, and so now let's do the cleanup round. So during this lesson, we talked about pre-predicates and their function in Tokipona sentences. I said before that we'd talk about the fact that I'm not calling them a pre-verb generally, and the reason for that is this. Tokipona doesn't really have verbs in the sense that English does. Tokipona's equivalent of verbs can also be actions, descriptions, and, as we'll learn later, prepositions, right? And so long as that's the case, it's more clear and more consistent to call the entire grammatical group the predicate. And so this group of words that go directly before the predicate, they are pre-predicates. Now, as far as interpretation, if something is in the predicate, it will often be assumed to be an action. This is especially true when an object is present with e. If something is in the object, it will often to be assumed often be assumed to be some physical thing. Now, neither of these are true all the time, but they're true enough that you can rely on it. You can use this fact to make more clear Tokipona statements. And the same goes for putting physical things in the object. We also saw that most pre-predicates can be restated without pre-predicates. Using them makes you better understood, makes you more clear. And then we also saw that certain phrases are ambiguous. There are multiple possible interpretations, statements that need more detail and more understanding and more context. This is a common feature of Tokipona. You don't need to specifically learn to avoid it. That will come naturally as you figure out what works and what doesn't. That said, if any ambiguity does come up while you're speaking, you can restate yourself in a variety of ways, as we've seen. I really hope you learned something today. Thank you so much for coming. Tawapona.